Wonderful guest speakers. Our first guest speaker is Emily Irons. Emily is one of our fraud experts in our electronic member center. They handle everything kind of dealing with computers and computer scams for SEFQ. And then we also have Sergeant Detec De Detective Sergeant Steve Brock with the Morton Police Department. Um, so I know that they are going to have some wonderful information for us today. So just kind of sit back, relax, and um, learn a lot of information about how to prevent scams from, uh, from getting you to be a victim on your account. So thank you. Now, I, I think that's a funny title. I think it sounds like you should probably call me. They're like, there. <coughs> okay. My apologies, guys. Thank you, Stan. Um, so my goal is, again, to go over some of these scams that I see often at SEFQ in this age group, um, how to prevent them and what you should do if you are falling victim to them. Um, and if, it, if it's something that you don't even think you're falling victim to, um, on the flyer that I gave you guys, these types of scams and financial abuse, this is a $36.5 billion industry a year. And I call it an industry because there is people, their full-time jobs, they go to these offices and their jobs is just to try to scam and get their money that way. So hopefully we can learn something. Um, I always tell people if you learn something or if you like what I have to say, my boss is in the house today. Um, if you don't, we do have uh, Steve Brock here. So whoever you would like to talk to afterwards. <laughs> So the five ones that I wanted to go over um, are the fake virus or the ransomware scams, the romance or the friend scam, check over payment, online lending scams, and the tax refund or the IRS scam. So the first one is the fake virus or ransomware. Does that like sound familiar? Do you, do you, are we familiar with like ransomware? So typically when you buy a computer, um, honestly anywhere, they will offer that service. That is a legitimate service to have on your computer. What it does, it protects your computer if you were to accidentally maybe cl click on a bad link um, or anything incoming to really protect your, your security and your privacy. Um, so they are legitimate things that you can get for your computer. But this is also one of the most common scams that we do see. And what happens is scammers are posing as these companies. Um, Microsoft and Norton are the most common ones that I can think of. Um, Norton has that big yellow shield. Um, and they're targeting the victims with these pop-ups or these unsolicited emails. And the word you're going to kind of hear me say a lot is creating urgency. So what happens, and actually, I feel like in the last couple of months, I'm seeing them a lot more email than I am seeing them like just a pop up on your screen. And the email will look legitimate, and the email is going to say, your card is going to be charged $349.99 for your renewal. And it's just, it looks like a legitimate receipt. It'll say Norton. Um, I think I just saw one from a member, and it said Best Buy. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to pretty much look legitimate, but it's creating that urgency. And it says, call now, renew now, get it done now. So creating that urgency is one of the one things. Um, when you're looking at that email too, so the Best Buy one, I actually just was speaking with somebody last week. And I asked him, forward me the email, let me take a look at it. Best Buy was spelled wrong. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad some of you are laughing because there is some really easy clues in some of these solicitations that is so easy for you, like just right off the bat. So if, you know, if the email spelled wrong, if it looks weird, just, just delete it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Um, so their goal, the biggest goal with, the, with this kind of scam, they want you to click on the link to purchase this to purchase their offer 
and they actually are trying to take remote access of your computer. Is, is that like a familiar term, like remote access? I'm getting some head nods, okay. For, so th those of you who don't know, when you click on a link, what's happening is they're trying to get access into your computer. So basically your mouse can move without you moving it and they can initiate things on your computer. Um, that's when they typically ask you, hey, log into your online banking. And then that's when your account becomes more vulnerable. But also what's more important with that too, even if you don't log into your online banking, if we don't get that removed, they will steal family pictures that you have. They will s steal those pictures and they'll sell that information. So they're trying to gain more things than just your online banking information. So t the best tips to protect yourself from these, if, it's un if you didn't buy your computer at Best Buy, Best Buy's not emailing you to purchase their virusware, right? Uh, if Best Buy is spelled wrong in the email, just delete it. Um, they can typically, this is done, like I said, through an email or through a, um, through that, that pop-up. They can, that's not what I'm seeing very often. Um, but if, also what's really, really important with these, with the ransomware scams, if you do pop-up or if you do get that email and they're saying call, 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 Norton actually doesn't have a customer service support line for that reason. There's no need, they don't have an 800 number that you can call to get that support. It's not needed. You can actually usually get that support in a brick and mortar store like Best Buy. Um, I know we're in Morton, but I think Staples actually offers that as well to get that support that you need and you can talk to somebody in person. You never want to eat, you never want to get help via online to clean your computer, I guess if that makes sense. If you need help with your computer, you want to go into that brick and mortar and get that help. Um, the biggest takeaway also, if you think you've given remote access or if somebody does have remote access, you want to unplug the device. If the device is just simply turned off, they can still access those pictures and those other personal things, um, Quicken, things like that, that can still be accessed. So you want to unplug that computer from the wall. Also, once remote access is given, it is there unless it's removed. So if this has ever happened to you, have you ever heard of somebody if, if it's happened to you? We were, at CEPQ, we actually require what's called a diagnostic report. You have to go in, we typically recommend Best Buy. You have to go in, they give you a little report, like this is what they removed. That remote access is not gone unless it's been professionally done. Now, what I hear a lot with this is my son, my niece, my nephew, they're really good with computers. And that's great that you have somebody like that if you want them to clean it. But if they miss one thing, that again, the remote access is there, that virus is there until it's completely removed. And we don't know it's completely removed until we get that diagnostic report from somebody who's doing it full time. So biggest takeaway from that fake ransomware scam is Unsolicited emails, pop-ups, Norton, from any of those cleaning companies, those companies are not contacting you that way. Um, and then once remote access is given, or if you're not sure, definitely unplug the computer, take it into a place to get it cleaned. The next one is gonna be the romance or the friend scam. This is probably the one that you guys might hear the most about. Um, this usually occurs when meeting a stranger. It typically happens online. You can meet them in person, but all of the cases that I have seen in the last three years, these, you're meeting people online. Often what happens, they're trying to play at your emotions. They're trying to play, they're trying to engage in any sort of way. They make you feel really good. They give you those compliments. Um, and that's how, and they're offering to maybe pay some bills things like that. That's, what's, that's what they're, they're trying to gain your trust as a romantic partner would or maybe as a friendship would. So I have seen a couple of these. They, these really, really hit hard at home. So I've had a member, she got a Facebook message from a friend and actually it was a friend that she recognized. It was somebody she went to high school with. So. He sends a friendly message and just says, hi, how are you? They start talking and the, the chatting is very, very casual. What you would expect from a friend that you haven't talked to maybe in five or 10 years. 
and you recognize them from going to high school with them. So they're chatting and everything is very normal. They, and they chat for about three months. On this third or fourth month, um, he is saying he's making very and the fact that we couldn't even get a hold of her until she wanted to apply for a personal loan, absolutely devastating. But typically what we see sometimes, I'll actually get people that call me and say, I need to send money to my boyfriend. I'm like, okay, where's your boyfriend at? He's in Nigeria and he's in the army and he's trying to get home. <laughs> Again, I'm really happy some of you guys are laughing and know, but a lot of these people, you know, it, does, it doesn't click like that. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, and that's how you can kind of get taken advantage of. So even though you're hearing this scam and me talk about it, even though you know you would never fall for something like this, again, this is a $36 billion industry. You might know somebody and just let them know like, hey, it's not okay to send funds to somebody, especially somebody you haven't met. So these romance and friends scams, what you're gonna hear a lot is that their boyfriend or a significant other is overseas. Um, again, they're gonna create that urgency. I need impossible to track and it, it's really devastating to cover recover from so the biggest protection I think that you can do from this is though it is normal to chat and even that that first story who lost four hundred thousand dollars you might get a friend request or a message from a somebody and it's okay to talk to somebody online but once we're getting like to ask for like personal details and funds and things like that, that's when your red flag should go up and really just take a step back. Like, does this make sense? Honestly, also give us a call. I actually put our phone number and our extension on the piece of paper with the blue line at the top. If you're not sure, give us a call. We would love to, you know, explore that option with you and make sure you're making the best financial choice for yourself. So give us a call. If you're not sure, if something smells funny, looks funny, it's probably funny, right? So again, for these types of scams, you really wanna be wary. They're trying to play at your heartstrings. Um, any of those relationships that are trying, that they're specifically building online. They're also denying, you know, they'll ask you for like a FaceTime and they never can. So be wary of those. I know you guys probably have children and grandchildren and other people who are legitimately meeting people online, right? Like that's the way to date now, right? Is just to do it online. It's, it's like a la carte. You can just totally pick out exactly what you want your husband to look like and be. And so for some people, some people have really great success with that. And I think that's awesome. Um, but I can guarantee you a lot of those relationships are not starting like, what's your debit card number? What's your online banking information? What's your, what's your user ID? Those are things you really want to keep close. The check over payment scam, um, this one's really interesting. I actually see this across all age groups. This happens more often than it should. I think that's all of these scams. This often involves, so at least what I see, selling merchandise online. Um, has anybody here ever sold anything on Facebook Marketplace? Okay, a couple or bought anything on Facebook Marketplace? It's a legitimate way to sell and buy things. Um, I actually think a lot of police departments offer do that pickup in the parking lot so you can make sure it's safe and secure. Um, but often what happens is you are selling something and somebody's going to message you. Let's say you're selling something for $100. They are going to message you and say, I'm going to pay $1,000 for that. And they send a check and that check is typically actually electronic on your phone. And they ask you to deposit that via mobile check deposit. And what happens is you deposit the check and just say, oh, just send me $500 back. You can keep the $400 plus the $100 for the merch. And then so usually they send off because they're overseas again or they're away, they're too far away from you. You're going to send your merchandise that you were selling. You're going to receive this, this check. The check is going to be bad. Um, I, has, has anybody here ever received a digital check? Okay, that's because you shouldn't. So that's awesome. <laughs> I actually have some, I have some 20 year olds right now. I was actually just talking to the, t the detective about it. I have these 20 year olds and they're depositing these checks and I ask him, 
how do you sign or endorse a digital check and what does that mean? Yeah, what's a check? They just tell me to take a picture of it. Mobile check deposit, I do want to say, mobile check deposit is a great service that CephQ offers and you definitely have that capability if you have a check in hand. Check in hand is the key there. So anytime somebody's offering you to, to pay for an item and they send you a picture of a check, that should be your absolute first red flag. Your other first red flag should be if they're gonna offer you way over what you listed it at. And I'm not talking like $50. It's going, every single time I see this, they're selling it for $100 and they're trying to give you $1,000 or $2,000. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, what, hey, why not? Like, of course I would want more money, right? Um, very, and sometimes in this situation too, if they don't volunteer the more money, they accidentally send the $2,000 and because you'll sell it for, let's say, $200. They send $2,000 and they'll just say, I submitted an extra zero, I'm so sorry. Again, we're creating that urgency. I need you to send it back to me right away. I didn't mean to send that because we're all good people in here, right? We're gonna do the right thing and we're gonna send the money back. But once that, those, you're gonna send the money back and then you're on the hook for those lines because those funds have returned because they deposited into your account. So that's really where they're trying to make um, their funds I know it sounds silly but this is one that I see really really often and again it's a kind of across all boards this one goes really really well into the online lending scam it's going to be very very similar as far as like that overpayment or you might get more money in the account than what you originally asked for um, but these are the online lending scams are born through these victims have trouble getting a loan just by walking into a bank or a credit union and applying. Lower credit score, they might be a little bit more desperate for funds. So what they do is revert to these online lenders. And a lot of these online lenders are gonna say, no background check, no credit check, cash today, and really get them on the hook. And then what happens with those the funds get deposited into their account and they're immediately asked for a good payment or good faith payment. So I applied for, a, and these are like small loans. Like people are trying to get loans for $500. I mean, how many of you are trying to go in and just willingly get a loan for $500, right? Like it just doesn't make sense. So, so these people apply for a loan for $500, $1,000 is submitted into their account. They're asked for that good faith payment for $250 out of the loan. They, that gets sent back. So those are, again, not good funds. And now, I guess technically you got your loan through SEFQ because you owe us the $1,000 now. So, <coughs> excuse me. So those, goes, those, kind of, those two scams really play hand in hand together. Um, as far as you're getting more money than what you thought, a lot of, Again, you're a good person, so they're going to play at those heartstrings and you're going to send the funds back you're gonna, or do that good faith payment um, to show that you're, you're capable of having this loan and you send those funds back. Good ways to avoid these, again, kind of like the online dating, it is legitimate to get a loan online. Actually, I just, my husband and I just bought a house and I have no idea. I had so many documents that I had to sign for on my phone and he would you need to sign these documents right now and we'd sign it and just click and it would send. So I definitely understand online is what everybody's doing. It's so easy, it's so convenient. But when things are offered like no paint, no, no credit check, um, just an ID, not even an ID, when they're quick and easy, that's when we need to be worried. Again, also if it's like a vendor you've never heard of um, or you, even if it's a vendor you've heard of, Again, if you find yourself in this situation or somebody that you know in this situation, call SEFQ. Even if SEFQ wasn't able to help you with their, your loan, our, our goal is to provide you with the best advice and guidance. So even if your loan isn't, you can't get a loan with SEFQ, you wanna get a loan with somebody else, we think it's fraudulent, we want to protect you. We, we don't wanna see you do business with, with a bad company kind of goes hand in hand with debit cards too, right? I don't have a lot of experience in debit cards, so hopefully there's not a ton of questions about those. Um, but it's the same thing. They're, they're guarding your account. We wanna guard 
your decisions, and when we're watching for those things, you know, if you run your card, it's a bad company, we're going to block the charge, right? If you want to get a loan and you're not sure, call us. We can definitely help you do that research and make sure it's a legitimate company. Um, there's also a website at the very bottom of this, the www.bbb.org, Better Business Bureau. If you're not sure, use that website. You can definitely search all kind of lenders, um, businesses, anything like that. I think you guys might like this one. Well, hopefully not like it, but the tax or the IRS scam. Has anybody heard of this one? I don't get this one super often. I get it a lot around tax season, right? So January, February. I actually did just have one um, yesterday, I think, which kind of surprised me because we should be done with taxes, right? So scammers will call and they say they're with the IRS. Now the, urge, the fake urgency on this one is huge. They usually are bullies and they usually are really mean. So they really, really trick you into paying these. Um, and usually what happens in these, it's the IRS, I'm the IRS, you owe me $5,000 in taxes, I need you to buy Apple gift cards. <laughs> I, I kind of, that, I thought that was, I mean, how long have we been paying taxes now? This one is so common, it, it boggles my mind. I mean, I've try, as a tax paying citizen, I had to pay my taxes. I had such a hard time paying my taxes, like legitimately, that why would, you, why would we think you know, a gift card, and I'm saying that, why would we think a gift card is a legitimate way to pay for your taxes, right? But again, this one is very, very popular. And this can kind of go into, Anybody who's asking you for a payment for a gift card should be a huge red flag. I think the Better Business Bureau website actually outlines that as well. That is not common business practices. Um, is it okay to buy gift cards for your grandchildren, a friend, a thank you? Absolutely, that's what they're there for. Um, to actually pay for merchandise or to pay, some, to pay your taxes, that is not okay. Um, if we could do that, I would save all of the gift cards my grandmother have gotten me and I would pay my taxes probably. <laughs> also along with this one, um, I'm not sure if the detective has heard a lot about this. Um, my husband is a, is a store manager over at Lowe's and I actually had to, I did have to go legitimately buy a gift card and his cashier, I, I hadn't met her yet, um, she asked me if anybody was forcing me to buy this gift card and I was so happy that I was asked that. And I said, no, nobody's making me buy this gift card. So, and actually, somebody else told me at CVS, they have a, it's on their, um, their card reader now. It'll ask you, it'll read off, like, is anybody making you buy this gift card? Please don't get frustrated with those people. They, it's so common for those places, Lowe's, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, all those places with all of those gift cards right there. They're, these people are being told, go to Walmart, buy this gift card, give me that code. If you find yourself buying that gift card, hopefully that's a red flag for you. Tell somebody, call somebody, and the second you give out that code on the back of the card, those funds are so beyond gone. There's, I don't think you've ever recovered funds from a gift card scam. Those are, and, and it's impossible to track where they actually spent those gift cards. <coughs> So this one, I actually had a member, um, actually this member called me, I didn't call out to this member. I'll get into a little bit about what I do with SoftQ. Um, this member called me and he was yelling at me and he said, I need my online banking re-enabled. I was like, okay. I don't know if any of you know, you can accidentally lock yourself out by maybe doing your password wrong too many times. So I asked him what the problem was. I asked him how I could you know, assist him. He told me, he needed his online banking enabled right now because he had to give his online banking code to the IRS. And I mean, I knew right away, I, 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 it was a tough conversation. So I asked him, I said, well, why does the IRS need your, need your information? He said, they told me not to tell you. They told me I can't tell you. I said, okay. So I was on the phone for a while with this member. And I eventually, you know, had to get, th you know, get through with him and explain that this is a scam. There's no legitimacy to the IRS. Won't 
I don't know, has anybody ever tried to call the IRS? It's impossible to get a hold of these people. Like if you ever needed them, it's impossible to get a hold of them. So trust me, they're not trying to get a hold of you. The only way I know the IRS will legitimately contact you is through the U.S. Postal. Um, so it's going through the U.S. Postal. They're not calling you. They're not emailing you. You can go to irs.gov also and see any information with your information that you're trying to get taxes that you owe and pay your taxes. So, and I say that, you know, I have members call me all the time and that's, they immediately tell me. So people who are getting victimized this way, they are being bullied and they're being coached on what to say once they get SEFQ on the line. So it's not even like, this is what I'm trying to do. They're telling you, hey, they're going to ask you that why you need to withdraw $5,000. Tell them it's just for a cash purchase. So they are being very legitimately coached through every step of this process. So back even to that first one, you know, with the 400, you know, that she lost $400,000. At some point, he was even coaching her, or she even felt comfortable enough to just, you know, be okay with sending that money. So a lot of these they're being coached they're being told what to say um and i guess where online banking ties into a lot of that they are trying to get that information i see a lot of quick hits so i guess i'll get into a little bit those are the scams i wanted to go over what i do a little bit i actually look at transactions daily that's specifically for my job and specifically if you're using online banking and you're transferring from your SEFQ account to an external institution. So SEFQ to Morton Community, which is a legitimate transfer. I have fraud measures I can look at, um, IP information, login information, and your secure access codes. So those are things that I look at and try to measure the safety of the transaction. So looking at those, a lot of times I see just those quick hit frauds. So they're just quick hitting and they're trying just to get a $9,999 transaction in or out. And you're always gonna see those odd amounts, $9,999.99. .99. Um, so transactions like that too, just like those odd numbers is what you kind of want to look out for. I will call out to members, maybe some of you in here have, could, could have gotten a call from me just to verify a transaction. A lot of the transactions I see are legitimate. I am, but a lot of them are going to be legitimate. There's only a few bad ones that you really have to find and pick out. So those are, the basic ones I wanted to cover with you guys, and what I want to stress the most is, if you're never not sure, if you're unsure, please call us an EMC. We would love, the extension I gave you actually goes directly to the Electronic Member Center, or EMC. It comes directly to our department. Um, you can get a hold of me there, but I work with a great team who also assists with online banking. If you just need assistance, you know, if you're locked out, you're not sure where to locate something at, um, I have a really great team who's awesome at that. And if you're ever just not sure, um, the biggest takeaway I would also want you to take away from me, there is no reason to share your online banking, login ID, password, or secure access code with anybody who's not on the account. If you have a joint member, they're absolutely allowed to log in. Nobody else needs to log in, um, not your accountant, um, not your boyfriend in Nigeria, not, no, not your grandson, not your granddaughter. There's nobody who's not on the account who legitimately needs to log into the online banking um, ever. There is a couple other um, on Facebook and on YouTube. We do have a couple other like smaller videos if you guys are interested in learning more, specifically the person to person. Are you guys familiar with that person to person payment? Um, those are like your Zelle or your Cash App, um, Apple Pay transactions. No, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, you don't need to. <laughs> um, but there is still really good information out there. I think I am going to hand it off to the detective now. Um, if you do have questions, please write them down. I will be just right here, and we'll have some time for questions afterwards. All right, well, Emily stole all my thunder, so we'll see here. You leaving already? All right. They don't want to hear me. They want to hear Emily. 
All right, uh, I'm uh, Steve Brock. I'm a detective sergeant with the Morton Police Department right next door. So uh, um, I've been with uh, Morton PD for actually 23 years today, completes my 23rd year, and uh, I'm the supervisor in the investigations unit over there. Married with five kids, trying to get them out of the house. <laughs> Here's my shameless plug for the police department. We are hiring. Uh, we're down a couple officers right now. So if you know anybody, under 35, or if they're in the military and they're getting out, they can apply as well. But uh, that's my shameless plug for the uh, police department. Uh, we are hiring, and everybody, every police department in the, area, agent, in the area is hiring as well. So, um, Seth, you, uh, Charlotte asked me to uh, talk about some of the scams uh, that we see, commonly see, um, and kind of, I want to give a little backstory of, of the purpose of the scams. Uh, it's usually to obtain either your banking information, uh, cash, uh, to get wire transfers, to get your credit card numbers, um, gift card numbers, things like that. But it's also to obtain your personal information uh, so they can create like uh, credit in your name. Um, they can go to the Verizon store and uh, act like they're you and open up a new account to get a new iPhone, um, things like that. And uh, they want to take control of like your digital online presence and so they can use like your reward accounts or your points on your credit cards, things like that. So that's the ultimate goal, what they're after. So um, what they're looking for, names, dates of birth, social security numbers, um, who you work for, uh, your maiden name, uh, mother's maiden name, all that personal information. Um, they're looking for passwords, email addresses, relatives, um, old phone numbers, all that kind of creates a digital person or your, your persona online. That's who you are um, when, uh, when people look for you. The only bad thing is, is most of the information is out there already online on Google. If anybody's ever Googled their name, it's got your address, your old address, your old phone number, who you're related to. All of that's already out there. It's uh, it's it's just crazy how much information is out there and then we also freely give away all that information because we sign up for uh, I want to be the CVS rewards member or the Kroger card or the the discount cards and everything else so we give away all our personal information our phone number address things like that to these companies well what do they do with that information they're in the business to make money so they sell our information to data brokers and so data brokers collect all our information and they sell it to advertisers and they sell it to, you know, people that market products, uh, you know, for people that are more seniors, um, things like that. So they sell all that information that we freely give to them and then they publish it online for others to use. So it's not too hard to get a lot of our information. And that kind of comes in later to a lot of these scams is, if they can go online and let's say they have your social security number, they can look up if they can look up old addresses for you and things like that. And then like when they're we're talking about credit card scams and that they can call you up. Yeah, you used to live at blah 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 street in Morton and your old phone number was this, so you can trust me because I can, can verify this information with you. Oh well that must be the bank that I uh, that I that I work with and so then you're gonna give them more information, of course. So um, some other things that we see a lot of our information is uh, this one's a common one that even my own parents fall for this one on Facebook it's like hey let's play that let's play this game like you know what was your favorite color when you're growing up or what your favorite food is what was your very first car um, things like that what are those usually questions are as well they're usually security questions on all your accounts where did you, where were you born what was your first car um, What's your favorite food, favorite color? Those are all security questions that are out there that give people access to our accounts. They can, because they already know the answers because we gave it away on Facebook. And so the data brokers collect that from Facebook as well. So all that information is out there that we've freely given away. So they take your information and they'll make brand new social security cards with uh, your social security card on it. They'll create, uh, we see this commonly anymore, especially with kids, is you can, for $25, you can go online and you can go order an ID card from any state that you want. It's commonly out of Indiana is what we're seeing lately. 
but you can get a driver's license. You send them your picture, whatever address you want on it, and they will send you two of them in the mail. So it's got your information on it, but it's got somebody else's picture on the driver's license. So now they have a social security card with your name on it, and now they have a driver's license with your name. So now I'm going to go into Lighthouse Automotive over here and buy a car. So Lighthouse seems to uh, have fallen for this one a couple different times where, um, or it's online, they'll, someone will purchase a car online and um, they'll email them copies of the driver's license, social security card. Again, they can go online, research your old addresses, things like that. Um, and then they'll have a car shipped to Chicago or whatever and then it's exported out of the country or cut up into parts, one of the two. Um, so those are a, a couple common things that they do. Um, again, if you go in the Verizon store, what do you have to, what's the first thing you have to do? You have to show them your ID. Well, they show them a picture ID. It's got their picture on it with your information. So um, it's common. Uh, that, that's how they're using your personal information that they've either got off online. Like I said, they either go in. A very common one that we've seen, especially targeting seniors, is um, they go into cell phone stores, open new accounts, buy three iPhones for their family, and then uh, three months later, you'll get a bill from Verizon and be like, I didn't go into the store. And so, uh, so that, that's a very common one. So yeah, Verizon's wanting to collect $3,000 from you for three phones, but they've, uh, they've been sold to somebody else that wasn't even you. So um, typically we do an identity theft report on that. And if they're local, local stores, we try to track that down, but a lot of times they don't, they don't have that documentation or the um, security videos gone, things like that. So some uh, credit card scams that we typically see is uh, they'll call you up and, hey, Mrs. Jones, yep. Uh, this is the bank uh, calling you. It looks like you got some fraudulent charges on your card. Uh, we just want to verify that you still possess the card in your wallet. Um, so you'll be like, yep, yeah, let me go over my wallet and get it out. So you open up your wallet and they'll give you your credit card number. Yep, that's it. Okay, can you just verify the last three numbers on the back of the card? Okay, well, you're the bank. You should already have that. And I just told you I have my card. But yeah, it, it's the bank. They've called. A lot of times it'll show up from SethQ because there's an you can go online and it's called spoofing where you can enter a telephone number in and then you enter the number that you're actually calling from and it'll make it look like it's calling from that number. So you may get a call from the Morton Police Department and it's not us. So, um, so yeah, the, you might have gotten this call from them. So they're asking for that three digit code. Yep, oh, yep, 975, that was it. Yep, okay. Uh, could you just verify the expiration date too, just to be sure? Well, the only thing they had of you was your credit card number. That's the only thing they had. But now they've got all the information for your card, so now they can use that information. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for your, uh, we, we'll just credit your account for these fraudulent charges from Best Buy. Uh, we'll credit the, your account and we'll move on. Thanks for your information. Goodbye. Well, the next thing you know, the next morning you're getting a call from Emily. Hey, what's going on here? You got... $6,000, you bought 12 laptops at Best Buy. And, and then usually at that point, you guys think I'm the fraudster. <laughs> yeah. I'm the fraud coordinator, but. <laughs> Correct. So. It's a big mess. That's kind of how your, uh, the credit card scam goes. Um, sometimes they will even know what your last purchase was. Because a lot of times um, you wonder, how did I, how did they even get my credit card number or my debit card number? You just can't, you're baffled by even how, how they even got it. Um, sometimes we give it away in phone scams um, with, hey, you forgot to pay this bill, so the water department, you need to pay online or we're going to shut you off. So you just give them the information on uh, over the phone. Uh, one we see quite a bit, or it kind of goes in cycles, it seems like every six months they come through town. Um, they're credit card skimmers, and they're mostly commonly at the gas stations, it seems like. Um, if The picture here is... Um, almost every gas station now is prepay. So you either got to walk inside, give them your money ahead of time, or you slide your card outside. Well, what's the easiest thing to do? You slide your card. So um, the picture up there is a, of the a typical gas pump. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, most of these gas pumps have a universal key in order to get inside of them. So you'll have a, uh, a group of uh, undesirable people come to the area, they'll install these uh, skimmer things, the, the middle picture there, basically open the door on the gas pump, they unplug one piece of electronic, they plug a 
they're this little strip in there, and then they plug the other uh, end of the electronics back in, they shut the door. And what this does is when your credit card goes through the machine, it saves that information. It allows your information, your credit card information, to pass through that device into the normal gas pump computer. So it just captures your information and allows it to pass on. So that'll just sit in the, they'll leave that in for a week in a gas pump. And so everybody just swiping their card. It's just skimming that information off and then letting the transactions go through. A lot of these are Bluetooth. So that means that you don't even have to go back to it and remove it to get the information off. They just pull into a gas station, fire up their laptop computer, connect to it remotely, and all that information is downloaded to their laptop now. So they have all the credit card information from everybody that went to the gas station for the past week. So, uh, and then they use that later on, uh, and I'll tell you how they, uh, how they use that information. Another not so common one that we see around here, but I, I know in like tourist destinations and that they um, sometimes like um, most people pay with credit cards when they go out to eat now. So, hey, you give your uh, credit card to pay the bill, the waitress goes in the back, she comes back out, hands you your, your, your receipts, you sign, you leave. Well, if you go back one, Charlotte, you're right. Um, the little, the, this picture here, this is a square, but I couldn't find one that they actually use. They can just swipe your card on their phone, and it, it basically skims the information off and stores it on their phone. So that one's a hard one to prevent because everybody, you know, I get my credit card all the time, and, you know. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a common one that uh, seems like those are more in like tourist destinations, things like that. The gas skimmer ones are, are fairly common um, that, we, that we see. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, I actually go back again, sorry. Um, other ways that they uh, get your credit card information or your social security number are data breaches. Uh, you hear them all the time, like you know Yahoo or or Best Buy, they had a data breach. Uh, you've purchased things through one of those, uh, one of those could be Lowe's, it could be any major retailer. And we had a data breach, so all your login information to get into their account, your account with them has been uh, stolen. Any credit card information has been stolen. So all those data breaches create all this big pot of information about you that's out there and Everybody's like, well, where do the, what do they do with all this information on you? Well, they sell it on the dark web, they call it. It's the dirty side of the internet. And you can buy bulk stolen credit cards. You know, for $500, you can get 10,000 credit card numbers. And so they download it all. Uh, and uh, so what do they do with the bulk stolen credit card? Now we can go. Um, they can either use that information to make online purchases and... Uh, Commonly, we've seen this one, and I'll talk about it later on. It's a it's an Amazon scam, where um, they'll buy something, they'll ship it to an address here in town, and then uh, they'll have somebody come pick it up, or they'll ship it to an apartment complex, things like that. But uh, they use it uh, to make online purchases. Um, one that we commonly see, as well as um, all those uh, gift cards that you buy uh, your kids and grandkids, um, those prepaid Vanilla One Visa cards, you buy them at the gas station, Walmart, wherever. Um, those are legit cards. Those are legitimate gifts for your kids and grandkids. Um, so I'm not telling you not to buy them. But what they'll do is they'll go um, to Walmart, they'll walk in, they'll just grab a handful of those cards and it'll just walk out the door with them. They won't buy them, so there's no value on them until you activate the card through the register. But what they want is the card itself, because they'll take the card, and you can get a credit card encoder, and so they'll take all that bulk stolen credit card information, they'll use a computer, they'll shove that prepaid Visa card in there, and it'll reprogram the credit card, that prepaid Visa card, with your credit card information on it. And so then they'll take that, and then they'll go back into Walmart or a box store or gas station, and then they'll, they'll actually purchase prepaid Visa cards again, or they'll purchase Walmart cards or Target cards or whatever. So they'll take those and they'll swipe them and keep on charging until it gets turned off or shut off. The algorithm shuts the card off because it's abnormal purchases, things like that. 
So now they've got all these legitimate cards that they bought with your credit card number. So they'll take those cards. I'm probably getting confusing here. So they'll, they'll take those uh, Vanilla One cards that they bought with your stolen credit card information. They're going to go down to the next Walmart, and they're going to buy some more with those cards that they just purchased. So they're kind of washing the money through several purchases, and it's hard to track. Um, but that's a common one we see is like, how did, how did my credit card get used at Walmart when I wasn't even there? That's how they're doing it. They're recoding these prepaid Visa cards to make it look like it's your card. They always go through the self-checkout lane, so nobody questions them. Um, COVID, thanks to COVID, everybody just wears a mask, and it's not questioned anymore. They always have a hat on. They always look down, so you can't hardly get a good picture of them. Um, it, it's a hard one to, to track. Um, and like, I put millions, but it is a billion-dollar fraud um, that uh, we deal with. But I'm not saying don't buy the prepaid visas. I'm just saying that's how they use your, your credit card information once they get a hold of it. So go ahead, Chuck. The Amazon eBay scams. Uh, Emily kind of talked about this one a little bit. Um, you'll get an email. Your Amazon uh, account's been compromised. You need to sign into your account. They give you even a little login screen on the email. Login through it right there. A lot of times those are scams. 99.9% oh, .9 of the time they're scams. Um, and one way to um, find this out is real quick. If you look at the email address it came from, a lot of time it just says Amazon um, fraud department or something like that. If you actually click the, uh, the email address that it came by, it'll show like the whole email address. And in that it should say Amazon.com. A lot of them it says, a lot of them will say like Google or whatever, automatically know it's a scam. You're only going to get an email from Amazon that's going to come from Amazon. Um, but if you don't click the actual email address at the top, it'll just show, you know, Amazon fraud department or whatever they're trying to be. But if you actually click it, it'll give you the whole email address. And a lot of them are Google addresses, um, Yahoo, things like that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you'll click that email. Oh, shoot, my, my Amazon account's been for, uh, compromised, so I need to log in. And now they've got your login information to your Amazon account. Same, same with eBay. Um, it, it, that one, I get those. I get the Amazon one in my email all the time. It, 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 yep, just delete them. Um, let's see here. So once they have your login information, uh, especially on Amazon, it seems like, they will log into your account. They will order a $1,500 laptop. But a neat feature that a lot of people don't know about is on Amazon, you can hide your purchases, especially if you have a joint account with your husband or whatever. You can hide your purchase so he doesn't know that you bought something and it's getting shipped to your house. And you can change like the shipping address. Once you're into your account, they can change your shipping address. They can change, they can hide your pur the purchases they make so you don't know it. But all of a sudden, the next thing you know is you're getting your credit card statement and there's a $1,500 laptop from Amazon. So uh, one of them we recently had is that happened. A guy called us from Chicago, says, hey, my credit card was used to purchase two $1,500 laptops from Amazon and Amazon told me that they're getting shipped to an address in Morton. I'm like, okay. But uh, we'll go out and talk to this address, uh, to the lady that lives at this address, excuse me. So we watched him, UPS delivered the laptops to the house. We went over to the house, hey, what's going on? She's like, oh, I work for this company. It's fast and ready resources or something like that. Really, how long you work for them? A week. All right, well, what do you do for them? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a package, uh, did I put it on there? Uh, I'm a package, it's a package forwarding service is what she said. I'm like, well, what, do you, what is that? She's like, oh yeah, I, I get these packages all the time from Amazon typically or eBay. Um, they pay me uh, 25 or 50 bucks per package. I basically inspect it, make sure the stuff's in it. I take all the labels off the package. I repackage it and I ship it to this address in New Jersey. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. And so she, I'm like, yeah, this sounds like a scam. You're trying to scam me is what it sounds like. So I said, do you have any emails from these? Oh, yeah, they sh ship me emails, tracking numbers and everything else. Legit, they were sending her the information for these packages. And she had sent them her social security number and 
they, they pay once a month. You get paid once a month, you know. Um, she would send them receipts for packing materials and things like that. And uh, she was basically getting scammed. They were using her as a shipping point. Uh, she shipped it to someone else who they were scamming as well. They repackaged it. So it's kind of like the gift card. They're just washing the transactions. And by the time it actually ends up in New Jersey uh, to like an organized crime syndicate that's out of Eastern Europe. So, um, but she gave me the address that she ships them to. And yeah, as soon as you Google the address, it comes up, you know, scam, scam alert that, uh, but yeah, that's, but this guy that had the laptops getting shipped on his account, he didn't know anything about it because they'd hid the purchases. So he didn't get any emails about the purchases and things like that. And so the only way he found out about it is when his, he logged into his credit card statement and was like, I didn't buy two laptops for $1,500. And that's how, uh, that, how that came out. But yeah, yeah, you can hide those purchases uh, from Amazon. So I had to go home and talk to my wife and be like, hey, <laughs> don't be hiding purchases. <laughs> um, Emily kind of hit this one a little bit. Uh, the Facebook scam, marketplace, items you're willing to sell for, uh, sell. Um, a lot of times, um, the common one we see lately is um, I'm selling this TV online on, Am on Marketplace. Yep, I'll purchase it. Hey, I want to make sure that you're real and that you're a legit person and not a scammer. I don't want to pay you. Is that what the, what the person texts you or messages you? And they say, I need you. To, I'm going to send you this code, enter this code into your phone and or into your computer, and then it'll show that you're a legit person and not a scammer. Well, what that does is gives them access to your Facebook account. So now, once they have access to your, uh, to your account, um, they can either lock you out of your account because they change your password, they change the email address on it and everything else. And now they can either charge you ransom to get your information back, to get your account back, or they use your account to create, um, to create more frauds. Like uh, a lot of times you'll get a, uh, you'll get a friend request from somebody online who you're already friends with. You've been friends with them for the past 20 years. Well, it's a new account showing a different picture, and that's what this is, is they're trying to scam more information from you using the information from your account. Um, never click those codes that they send you. Um, never pay, especially Facebook Marketplace, never pay online for an item. Um, Emily kind of hit the, the um, check over payment scam. Um, that was a common one through Facebook Marketplace. A lot of people sell cars on Facebook Marketplace. Yep. Uh, I'll buy your $5,000 car. I'm going to send you $7,500. bucks. i am going to have somebody ship it. And so then uh, just uh, pay the shipper when they get there. Well, the shipper, nobody's ever coming for the car. Um, they, then they'll, they'll contact you a few hours later. Oh, I'm just going to have somebody local pick it up. Just wire me back the money kind of the same way, and uh, you think it's legit, you send them the money, the wire transfer goes through, and it's usually gone and out of the country. So very hard to, uh, hard to track a lot of these scams. A lot of them originate outside of the country, but some of them still are legit in the country as well. So um, <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is the newest one that we've seen, and it's not really targeting your guys' uh, age group very much, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, it's more uh, kids, grandkids probably are falling scam to this one. Um, we had a gentleman that uh, reported to us that uh, he, uh, some, some attractive lady uh, contacted him on Instagram. Um, it's a site owned by Facebook. It's basically just pictures and uh, things like that, small videos uh, is what Instagram is. Um, they were communicating over Messenger on Instagram. Uh, got comfortable with him, uh, with this female. Uh, they started sharing a little bit more information about themselves over a couple days. Uh, eventually got uh, the conversation turned uh, sexual and they each wanted, the female wanted a nude picture of this gentleman. Uh, so he think he's going to get lucky and so he, uh, he takes a, you know, an image of his, uh, of his private areas and sends it to her. She sends a few images back to him. He's thinking, ah, oh, this is going great. And then uh, he sent her, I think it was 10 photographs in various states of dress and undress. And uh, 
then she switches accounts on him, wants to go to Snapchat, which is this little ghost thing. Snapchat's the devil. Um, but uh, now she has access to both his accounts as far as what his account names are. And bo but both, on both of these sites, you get access to their friends list. So now she turns around and says, you need to send me $500 or I'm going to post your nude images to all your friends on your friends list. And this is legit. She, can, she sent him a screenshot of like all the names on his friends list that were composed. Like she was ready to send the, send the, uh, the message out. So what's he, he doesn't want his private parts all over the Internet. So he uh, uses one of these digital pay services, PayPal, Zelle, Venmo. He actually used Venmo, sent her the $500. Um, and then that was supposed to take care of it. No, nope, you need to send me some more pictures or else I'm going to share these. Well, like a dummy, he sent more pictures. Shared more pictures and now she's... Now she is like, all right, now you need to send me another $500. He ends up losing like $2,500 to the scam before he, before he shut it off. So we investigated that one a little bit, uh, a little bit further. Um, and um, the account that it was getting deposited in um, was an account that was in Indiana. So we ended up calling this kid up and we're like, hey, why are you fleecing this person for $2,500? And he says, uh, well, to be honest, He's like, I fell victim to the same scam. I didn't have any money to send them. But they said, well, give us access to your, your digital pay online account, and we'll just run a scam through you, through your account. So it looks like this kid's getting paid from the scam, but it's actually they're washing it through somebody else's account. And so, yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun one. That was a new one to us. And uh, unfortunately, kids will send out uh, a lot of stuff they shouldn't. And, uh, uh, but that's just not kids. Uh, you get some lonely seniors as well that, uh, that uh, are just looking for love and attention and affection, just somebody to, uh, to connect with and uh, just don't send out any nude images. <laughs> I pretty much figured that with this guy, age group that was common sense, but it's hard to say anymore. Now, another one that's been around forever is the phone call scam. Uh, yeah, Mr. Jones, yep, uh, this is the IRS. Or the FBI, you've got a warrant for your arrest. Uh, the caller typically has a foreign accent. Um, yeah, just hang up on them. Um, but a lot of people, uh, they'll use, uh, again, they'll use a spoofing service. Uh, so it looks like it's coming from the Morton Police Department or the Peoria County Sheriff's Office. Um, that's a free service. We actually use it to call people um, to misrepresent who we are, things like that. Uh, a lot of them, it'll be, uh, you missed a court date, uh, civil penalty on your taxes because you defrauded the government, and uh, we know you've been cheating on your taxes for the past 10 years, and uh, you didn't report that income you made from, you know, the sale of your car or whatever it is. Um, could be, uh, this one, this one's a pretty in-depth one, is uh, you recently traveled within the past three years. Uh, you rented a car in your name. They recovered that car, and there was a dead body in the back of that car. <laughs> or it was used in a crime, or it was used in a robbery, and uh, there's a warrant for your arrest, and if you don't pay us now, we're going to send the local authorities to get you. I didn't quite get that one, but I was sitting at my desk next door at the police station when they called me and basically said there was a warrant for my arrest. So I played with them and played along, and I'm like, oh, really? What's this warrant for? You know, go down this. And so just, I, I messed with them just because. I don't recommend messing with fraudsters or scammers just because they'll eventually trick you into giving them something. And so. Um, but I took enjoyment in messing with them since I'm sitting in the police station next door. Uh, was that all I had on that one? I don't remember. Go back a second. Uh, a, a lot of these, uh, like Emily Hitt, uh go to Walmart, buy me Walmart uh, cards, uh, Green Dot Visa cards. Uh, that's how they want you to pay. There's no agency out there that doesn't accept cold hard cash check wire transfer things like that so if if you get a phone call or you think some there's a scam they always say don't tell anybody like like emily said it's always there's an urgency there there's a don't tell anybody you don't want to be embarrassed that, that you have a warrant out you're everybody thinks you're this goody goody person and look at you you've got a warrant you don't want that out there so they're always trying to shame you in some way and to keep it secretive um as always you can take care of this over by phone um 
buy these Visa cards, we'll call you back in 20 minutes and just read off the numbers on the back of the cards. Well, like she said, as soon as you read those, they're entering them online, they're spending them real quick. It's usually to buy more cards, things like that, and that money's just gone. Um, that, one, that one's been around since I started for the police department and it's still successful for them. It's probably one of the most common ones that, uh, that we see is the phone call, you've got a warrant for your arrest. So, all right, this one's a good one. Uh, we call it the grandparent jail scam. This one's been around forever too. Um, here's how it goes. Ring, ring. Hello? Grandma? Yeah, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I'm in jail. What happened? I didn't do anything. We were on a trip and we got pulled over and now they say I have a warrant and I'm really scared, Grandma. Can you get me out? They just say you need to wire transfer the money. It's $3,000 to get me out. I promise I didn't do anything. Please, please, please. There's scary guys in here. They got me locked up. It's dark. It's cold. They won't let me make any other calls. Please, will you send, a, send, send money or will you pay with Visa cards or whatever just to get me out of here? Uh, well, they didn't know anything about you. All they had was a phone number. But you just gave them your grandson's name when you said, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, it's Johnny. I'm Johnny now. And so they create that sense of urgency. Grandma, you know I'm a good kid. I wouldn't do this. You know, I don't know what's happening. I can't get a hold of my mom, but don't call her because I'm embarrassed. I don't want mom to find out that I got arrested. And so they create that sense of urgency again, and nobody's in jail. So they're just trying to get you to either Western Union, wire transfer money to this account. They only accept Western Union here at the jail, Grandma. Here's the number, here's the, the, the routing number for Western Union, and all that is, you go to the Western Union at Kroger's, sends it out of the country is typically where that goes. But that one's a pretty common one, especially if they have any information about you um, that, that you may be older or you may have grandkids, they use that, that type of scam on you. So, uh, Romance scams, this, is, uh, this one's pretty hot and heavy here lately. Um, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> Everybody, like Emily said, anymore, everybody uh, finds their perfect match online. You know, you can enter in your height, weight, and what you like to do and things that you like to do now, and uh, it out, spits out 10 people for you that uh, you're the greatest and we, we make the best match together. So uh, with that comes fraud, of course. With any good, uh, with any good service, there's always a bad side to it. So uh, would, it's hard to, hard to believe, but I met my matched my soulmate they live in australia uh, we met online we've chatted online for months he's the the you know the love of my life or she's the love of my life um they're just struggling over there they're trying to get, get things together she's applying for a visa she's going to come visit me uh but you know she doesn't make much money is there any way you could send me money so i can apply for my visa it's 400 dollars here Oh yeah, I can't wait to meet you in person. I'd love to love to see you. And you'll wire them the 400 bucks or you'll send them a credit card number uh, for that. And they'll continue this scam up, scam of, uh, I got, you know, I, I went and picked up the money and then my landlord came by and I had to pay or else he was gonna evict me. And now I lost the money for the, for the visa or for my airline ticket. And so it's just continuous scam week after week of, I, I don't have the money. I want to come see you. You're the love of my life. Um, my car broke down. I need a little bit more money, a little bit more time. And all of this is just a scam that they're just they're just trying to get you to send money. And like I said, it's not even big amounts of money. It could be 300 bucks. Could be 150 bucks. Could be $5,000 uh, for uh, for an airline ticket too. And so um, that's a that's a common one we kind of see anymore. Um, this is another one, especially since the stock market's uh, turned down as the gold scam. Um, we had a guy that lost $400,000 to a gold scam. Um, um, it's usually the Canadian gold scam. That's why I put label it as a gold scam. They'll get a phone call or you get an email. Hey, stock market's tank and you lost 20% already. Uh, you need to switch the gold. You, you need to get out of stock market and get something more stable, something you can put in your hands. Uh, we'll ship it to you. Uh, or if we can hang on to it for you if you don't think that it's safe at your house. Um, just wire transfer the money. They'll have an online ad, a web page. They'll have 
literature, you know, they'll have references, everything else, and it's all one gigantic, gigantic scam. You're never going to get, get gold sent to you. Uh, there are legitimate gold brokers out there, but uh, if they're calling you randomly about, uh, about gold on the phone or they're sending you an email, it's probably not legitimate. Um, but we've seen this one ramp up a lot here lately because the stock market has tanked, everybody's losing money right now, and everybody's fearful that they're going to lose their, their golden nest egg, and so I'll just get out of the market again get into gold. And so um, another version of this one is that you've had a long-lost relative that lived in Canada, or the Nigerian prince was your long-lost relative, <laughs> and you have to pay the tax in order to get your gold inheritance from them. And so you have to pay wire transfer us the, the $2,500, or go get a Visa card, prepaid Visa card, and send us the money, and we'll sh ship the gold to you. And so that's just another another, uh, another scam that we see. Everybody feeling overwhelmed yet? Like you're, everybody's out to get you? And, uh, understandable. It's, uh, it's a scary world we live in. Um, a lot of things, we get a lot of identity theft reports. Um, somebody used it, my information to buy credit or buy a cell phone at the uh, Verizon store or T-Mobile store. Um, we recommend that everybody just, especially this age group, you guys aren't borrowing money anymore. Very few of you are, are uh, going out and getting loans and things like that. Just lock your credit or freeze your credits. Uh, the three credit bureaus are on that top line out there. Experian, TransUnion, uh, Equifax. It's free to do. It doesn't affect anything. You still have a credit score. All of, by freezing your account or locking it, all it does is it doesn't allow anybody to open up new lines of credit in your name. That's the only thing it does. You'll, you'll make a, now if it feels like you're getting scammed because you had in your social security number on, on their website, uh, but they'll send you a PIN number, um, they'll email to you and they will send you an actual um, US mail card with your PIN number uh, as well. And so you can go online, you can unfreeze your credit if you wanna go get a loan for a car or if you need to you know, refinance your house or whatever. You can unlock it for a specific amount of time, and then it goes back locked again. So that's the number one way we tell people to not be ident by have your credit stolen is just lock it. Mine's been locked for probably 10 years. Now I unlock it when I need to borrow money um, and go from there. Uh, another one, uh, just don't answer the phone uh, if you don't recognize the number. Most people have cell phones now. If it's not in your contact, you probably don't need to talk to them. Uh, just send them to voicemail. Uh, if it's important enough, it's the hospital test results. They will uh, they will leave a message. Um, never wire transfer money anywhere. Never go buy visa prepaid visa cards to settle any type of debt. Um, and again, if you get one of these calls and they're sending you and you find yourself going to CVS to buy these cards or whatever, um, I'm glad to hear that a lot of these uh, businesses are asking people. Just I mean. They're so convincing that you're going to jail and you need to keep this quiet, or else you're just going to fear, you're just going to be publicly ridiculed for all this. Um, just, it's not you're going to be more embarrassed in the end um, when you find out you just got scammed for five thousand dollars and now you've actually got to tell your kids or whatever that hey I got scammed. And so, again, don't hide it. Just put it out there. If you got scammed, you got scammed. And, um, either your bank will try to uh, help you get that back or, uh, or we can. Um, a lot of these uh, scams are from outside the country. Um, yeah, you, a lot of them you have, have, a, have an accent. Uh, go back just a second. Was there anything else on there? Uh, I, I asked before I got up here, um, I don't know if a lot of you have the app on your phone, but you can toggle your like Sefki card off in a lot of the credit card companies. You can turn your card off and on on your phone. Yeah, on the app, if you open up the app, and Emily could probably tell you, walk you exactly through, that you can turn it on. It's like an on and off switch. So they may have your credit card number, and they, they scammed it from the gas station. They try to use your credit card number when they recode a, a Visa gift card. It doesn't work because your card's turned off. And so it may, may hit it once where your card's been left on, things like that. So mine get toggled on and off all the time. So the only issue with that is if you have like auto pay on something, but a lot of those I think will still go through. Uh, another feature, I don't know if Seth Q has this, but every time you make a transaction, they'll send you a text message. Yep, absolutely. Um, 
So that's another way to know if your card's going to get compromised real quick is, huh, you just bought uh, $1,500 at SAFQ and you just got a text message. And so a lot of times they can probably immediately reverse that transaction. I don't know how, how the banking industry works. So, um, let's see here. Yeah, don't uh, always ask. If you think that uh, something doesn't sound right, ask somebody. Ask your kids, ask a neighbor, whatever. If it doesn't sound right, it's probably not right. And uh, don't ever fall for the, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. So I think that, uh, that was all of it for me. Um, I guess we'll do questions for Emily and I. And we have, we promised everyone we'd get them out at 1 o'clock. Oh, shoot. So you got four minutes. So Fire away, quick. <laughs> they asked me how long I was going to talk. I'm like, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes? That's probably a half hour. 45 minutes? I don't know. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Not uncommon. I talk. What was that? Oh, like the the virus, like uh, the Norton, what do they call it? Uh, oh, McAfee's a good one. So the question is, is what? A virus yeah. protection. So they say don't get any, but for some reason I know it's a vast that I got. That's okay. So she's asking um, about getting um, just any type of malware st things. Uh, McAfee was also mentioned. I am not a computer expert, and if you are getting advice that you don't need those things, no. I wouldn't disagree with them. Um, if you have McAfee, McAfee, I should have mentioned that one. That is a really good one. And typically what those do, um, they're protecting you while you're surfing the web. Um, from your information to get loose or for somebody trying to come in. You can have McAfee on your computer or Norton or the other ones, but when you allow that access, that's going to bypass what you have in place. So those can't clean your computer to wipe them once that access is there, um, but it's definitely there to help protect from anything else. It's another step, honestly, that that scammer but has to get through to get in. I need people tell you, you don't, he's my grandson, he's a brain, but you don't have to. So he tech, works at a yeah. Um, technology is always advancing. Um, that's why things are always changing at SAFQ. Things are always changing at other institutions. Um, protection is really good out there, and it's always advancing on your computers. So there's a lot of things in place already that are absolutely free. I personally, I probably would tell you, you don't need to purchase those things. A lot of times when you purchase a computer, especially at Best Buy, they do offer them like the first year free, and they're fine. And there's a lot of people who still have those services, and they're great. A lot of people do really like them, but you're absolutely right. Technology is advancing, and when you're on a website, you should see that little lock, like up at the top right corner. That's how you know the website is safe and secure. You can put your credit card information on there. It's buying things online is super legit, right? Like everybody does it. But those are the things you want to look for. I think somebody over here had their hand up. Yes. Um, so he's asking, I was asked to repeat the yeah. questions, um, he's asking if your credit or your debit card in your billfold, in your wallet, in your pocket, or in your purse, is it true that that can be scanned by somebody nearby? This is, I have never heard of that information being They would have to way. have some type of like mobile payment service like on a phone that they walk up and like stand close to your, to your wallet in your back pocket, something like that. We haven't had that uh, ever happen, but I, I think that's the only way that because a lot of your credit cards have the little chip in it now, you can just tap tap it to the thing. That would be the only way they would have to get close enough to like basically touch it through your wallet to get it to work. So somebody's not standing there with a scanner trying right, to right. absorb I, that information. I can't just whip out my phone and correct all your inform get all your information standing up here. And so, if so, I'm retiring today, and we'll see you later. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Is what? LifeLock, is LifeLock any good? Actually, a lot of people, a lot of my members that I've spoken with, they have used LifeLock in the past before. Um, they actually can use that for password security um, and information security. That little goes more hand in hand with the um, locking your credit. 
Um, but I've actually have heard really good things about LifeLock. I personally haven't used it. Um, I would actually go to bbb.org uh, and probably look at it more if you're interested in something like that. We recommend those, like if your information does get stolen <coughs> and you know you get a bill from Verizon or whatever, it's not yours. We recommend that uh, you lock your credit, then you can have like a credit monitoring service as well. Locking your credit kind of just shuts it down so they can't open up more credit. But they can, we also recommend like, hey, run a credit report on yourself once a year. You can, you can do it online, unfortunately, uh, just to make sure there's no other uh, accounts open in your name that you shouldn't be and close out old accounts that you don't need, things like that. So. And everybody has a brochure there that, it's a blue brochure that it says like Senior Sense on it. Oh, there on the front, yes. Um, inside there are the addresses for the three credit bureaus. So that's available for you inside there as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. My sister worked for the state of Arizona and she was telling me that the TR probably yeah. like if you go out now oh, you can get for a menu or whatever. Yes. But she said that they've had a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Really? Yeah. So I haven't had issues with QR yeah, codes. Yeah, we just, I'm not sure if you're we just recommend. Slide had a QR code. Yeah, to, um, yeah, that's what we do. Because I.